Shala, Bodhi Indra, Shamanu Mengala, Anurana Loya, Oral Smiles Freya, Shara Ere Shala, Bodhi Indra, Shamanu Mengala, Anurana Loya, Oral Smiles Freya, Shara Ere Shala, Bodhi Indra, Shamanu Mengala. Went to um, the museum first. The museum's always kind of nice. I, I have, I've taken a few photos here and there in the museum. Luxor Museum's got some really nice pieces. I love this piece uh, just because it's it actually is. I just this is I wanted some good sh photos of this for the geopolymer people because it's like you know how I sometimes will show like veins of other material. I'm like this doesn't work with geopolymer. This is literally they've carved this from a section of granite where it went from black to pink granite. Or to red granites. It's absolutely beautiful stone. Um, but you can see how that's like they just they found this really cool piece of stone with the transition point, and they just made his head jet and his head on it. And you see this how it works on the back here, where it's just you know that's the basically a big vein of 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 red granite running through this granite diorite. Very cool. Some nice Tefnuts, just cool Tefnut statues. Uh, they do have a nice. They did have. They have a very nice diorite, nice uh, bowl here that's quite thin. And I do like the context under which these bowl. It's like they have this, you know, porphyry vase and diorite bowl, whatever. Um, and of course, it's it's in the context of <laughs> all of this. This is always cracks me up. Like pottery. You know, really primitive handmade pottery, shocker, and very hard stone vases. So it's just typical kind of thing. I'm trying to decide if I think this was like a pottery wheel or something I was showing here. Yeah, pottery wheel, I think here is like he's pushing the pedal and they're turning a wheel. I think that's what it was. And they definitely developed that later in, um, you know, later periods. Relief of a new oh, chariot workshop. Yeah, so they're making chariot wheels. So yeah, this is like New Kingdom, right? It's yeah, New Kingdom. So they this is back this is after they'd figured out the wheel. Uh they got the pottery wheel and they actually got chariot wheels. This is them doing stuff. Making wheels. And they didn't have these wheels in the old kingdom. Seen on this relief fragment from a decorated tomb is set within a group of royal workshops. The architecture is indicated by register lines and by doors which are depicted frontally in typical Egyptian fashion. Craftsmen can be seen here making chariot wheels and statues of the king, among other objects. Hmm, cool. More alabaster um, canopic jars with actual lids. Akhenaten. Akhenaten. This is now uh, Luxor Temple. And you can see the amount of repair work. I mean, there's a lot of this is repair work, but but Yusuf's pointing out that these, you know, this is like. There's a difference between the statues here. It's a long story. Yusuf thinks that it's like I don't agree with him on this. Um, he thinks that any the the it's the these when you see when you see crowns like this where it's where it's just the just the bowling pin hat, right? Just the the bowling pin without the typical like you know the the headdress the the thing that comes out to the sides the Uraeus crown. And like the you know the typical kind of King Tut mask headdress, we it comes out on the sides. Um, he thinks that is. Uh, he thinks the older stuff is typically always this, just these, just these pointy hat ones. And I don't agree because some of the gigantic statues, like the one at um, the Ramesseum, also have that triangular kind of headdress, as do some of the ones at Luxor, as does the one that Chris Dunn has studied. 
which I'm not really sure if Yusuf's across that research. Um, but it's interesting. It's an interesting point. I, I do want to sort of talk to him some more about that at some point. Obviously, we can't get into everything while we're uh, on tour with people because he's usually answering questions the whole time. And so am I. Yeah, it's been busted up. Well, it actually does mean something in terms of the orthodox sets of ages, but I, I do I do contend that some of these statues are older, uh, both styles, and that, you know, they've inherited both of the styles from uh from that period. I do I just love this picture, man, like the the two types of columns. You got the single piece granite column next to the you know, the, the stacked rounds of sandstone. Just it's a great demonstration. Like this granite core of Luxor here. You saw that if you guys have seen the Luxor video, you know what I'm talking about. Um And then yeah, we went here in the evening. I'm gonna probably the next trip or two we're gonna go in the daytime because the problem with the evening is is that everybody can go to it in the evening. And it's just full of people. And while it's cool, I just think it'd be better to go without that many people. Yeah, thanks guys. And she thanked him. What's up? Christians, goddamn turning these things into Christian chapels, churches. I mean, you can see the the laser mark on there too. You can see the uh, all of the Christian art, how they plastered over the top of the hieroglyphs and then painted on it. <laughs> they just plastered over it and painted like they're Coptic Christian all over it. And then you have these very, very much Constantinople style or ptolemaic era uh columns these ones here now, in fact i think i took some pictures of you see how wavy they are yeah it's like they're not they're very uh irregular and notice that you run your hand over them they're not smooth or anything just good example like all made by pounding you can literally see how it's done but this is what happened in the ptolemaic era and they were making these out of granite but small relative to the big ones and very imprecise quick build a church on it well yeah they do that everywhere and when they're still doing it i mean there's literally a mosque on the site of uh of karnak of luxor temple oh, this is out uh, I got a shot of you in the... this is out like so this is the, the they've fully restored <laughs> cool. this it's something Thank like you. three the kilometers telegram. plus the avenue of sphinxes between the two sites i'm trying to like zoom in in the shitty light of course, you have the competing calls to prayer. Okay. Yep. Our little group. Well, some of them. This isn't our group. These people were in our group. But it's a cool experience going at night. It's nice to do it at least once. Uh, Valley of the Kings. Oh, I did, uh, I did want to... I do want to see this, actually. We're going to skip right to it, even. Oh, well, look at these. So I went in, we went into some Valley of the Kings. Uh, this is probably the burials of Ramses 5 and 6. Just some really weird that they were drawing on the walls. And I didn't really want to make of this. <laughs> That's interesting. The winged serpent with feet. Triple headed. Okay. I mean, the artwork in here is amazing. Like the Temple of Seti, the, the, the actual tomb of Seti the First and everything. Uh, totally worth seeing again. Uh,. But we go to the Valley of the Kings these days, and I'm pretty much like, yeah, look, we'll go into the first tomb. I go into the first tomb with everyone. We we buy the extra ticket for like we go to to Ramses five and six because it's a very cheap ticket and it's in, and it's a huge tomb. Um, and we tell people like, well, because Seti the first is like a thousand Egyptian pounds. I mean, it's not too bad. It's like thirty bucks, right? And uh, and it's like I I actually rate the tomb. I I do rate the the Seti the first tomb. I, and because be useful to tell people like it's it's basically it's not that much better than Ramsey's five and six which we give them a ticket for 
but if people and then it's like on your entry ticket you can go see three so i'll have like 12 of the tombs open random like not always the same ones so you get like three stamps you know they, they put holes in your ticket you can see three tombs on the entry ticket and then there's a couple others that are extra tickets like ramsey's five six is an extra ticket it's like 150 pounds uh tutankhamun is three or four hundred for five hundred pounds it's quite an expensive ticket for what it is and we tell i mean i generally tell people don't bother uh some people do want to see it just because it's famous but it's the smallest them tomb in there some of the artwork's okay but it's this tiny little tomb versus like ramsey's five and six is this giant tunnel that goes branches out and stuff and then uh city the first is is very impressive and it's the most expensive one um but we go in we go into like five and six ramsey's five and six straight away and then we're like all right you guys can get tickets or you, you want to go see the other ones we'll t- we got some helpers that will take them to it uh take them to those places and then you know you want to either first go there or just, just explore and go and see a few tombs and i, I head straight to the cafeteria <laughs> sit down get a coffee i'm like i'll see you guys here in two hours it was fantastic <laughs> now this is some of the stuff i wanted to look at that i was interested in this day for obvious reasons because this is how they make the handmade alabaster and it's essentially the same process that uh that they were using in the old days uh just with steel tools now and they have these guys sitting in their little sand pit working on it all day trying to do shows for tourists which they're about to put on for us And you too can go there and play with Alabaster, should you wish. And he's just doing the... 75. sometimes bigger and sometimes smaller. This is my example. The shape of the base, how will it look like? You can if you want, yeah. You don't have to go through that. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I don't want to see the show. I wanted to see the actual uh, thing that they used to hold it. This thing here. So this is how they how they would do it. This is what's this, as is depicted on the scene on the wall same thing but they just this is made from steel they would use a bent stick with weights on it and flint tips but this is essentially the same technique just using steel tools now she just leans hard on it and just like cranks this thing He just puts his shoulder on top of it, just cranks away at it. It's all like wedged in there with, uh, with flint. That was funny, he's like, he's ready to go, he like takes the shit. <laughs> Yeah, almost indistinguishable, right? Same thing. So I just wanted to get that footage. I was just interested in that. And then, uh, what are they looking at here? Then yeah, inside the old uh, the old alabaster store. So I did. I got given a gift of a couple of alabaster pieces while I was there. I I am gonna buy like a handmade alabaster thing because most of these things are all machine made. Like most of these are all lathe made. Um, there are, but there are the handmade ones as well, which obviously look different to the machine made ones. And I'm kind of interested in a handmade one just to 
just to see how. I mean, it depends how much they are, but I'd love to get one and then take it and measure it. You know, put it in the system. But yeah, we take people to these stores. It's cool. I mean, people buy shit. <laughs> They're like this. No smoking. Yes, vaping. Okay. This is inside, like a real big one, a real big one. Look, beautiful piece. Look at this thing. Giant damn vase, but. Obviously, all lathe turned. Ah, and then we went to Mr. Butterwee's house for dinner. This is a this is a, a a family that they help us. Basically, the guys that we work with in Luxor and Upper Egypt, and they invite a couple of us around to the to their house for dinner one of these nights. And they grow this shit local. Like this is literally they the whole street is all their family, and then they have farms, and all of this is grown locally. The ducks, it's like a duck uh, stuffed pigeons the rice you've got the the beans and the other things and this is like a potato bake the grape leaves stuffed with rice it's so good the food is so good and it's just the hospitality is um really cool and they just insist on bringing us around and feeding us so very very cool but yes i very much enjoy going around to butterwee's house when i'm in luxor and getting fed like this every time <laughs> We did look at Karnak, I felt like. We looked at Karnak on the other the other day. We looked at the saw cuts because we found some extra saw cuts. And we got our footage of the... Um... Yeah, because we looked at like the sun, sun setting and stuff. We did that, yeah. Uh, Komombo. Edfu and Komombo. Always cool. So there was some interesting stuff from what Graham had said... Um, on his uh let me see i probably got on my phone here so graham had um there's apparently been a new translation of uh of what's happened um i'll find it here at edfu so the the, the thing at edfu is the the translation of um the toth passage that talks about atlantis so yeah that's at edfu and we cruise all day in the after we go there in the morning cruise all day on the ship which is real nice then in the afternoon we go to Komombo Temple of Horus and Sobek just the cool crown just cool colors I do like this thing I always take pictures of this for some reason it's like it's like you got to squint at it like am I my eyes are blurry what the hell this yeah it's just the uh the effect of these glyphs it's very cool so you always like think like your eyes are out of focus looking at it <laughs> it's trippy in person too and the, the uh the uh hawk as well lotus flowers elephant glyph this is uh, this is people some people think that no no they never had glyphs for elephants let me f call that it's pretty sure that's not a boar that's an elephant with the tusks and the trunk they definitely knew what elephants were yeah like i said didn't take a lot of pictures outside of um tombs of the nobles elephantine island I am a little bummed about the fact that there's a piece missing. I'll show you the piece that's missing. Let's find it. I feel like it's this one, Elephantine. Yeah, this one. This piece is missing. This piece that Russ is holding right here. This piece, not there anymore. I tried to find it, could not find it. Ah. And it's the, uh, it's like the, you know, obviously the corner of the bull nose, you know, from one of the big boxes that was here. So, it is there no more. Russ didn't take it. I'm pretty sure he couldn't get that out in his bag. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, we turned it over. It's, it's hard. If you flip it over, you can't see this side of it. It doesn't, it looks a bit more innocuous, but yeah, it's sad that it's gone. And it's not in the museum there on the site either. We went and asked and sometimes they pop those things up in the open air museum and at the museum and we went and asked and they're like nope nobody knew about it so see so yeah, this is hauling you got to walk up these damn stairs <laughs> to get to the tombs of the nobles and ask one it was pretty cool uh there's some cool stuff up here 
Uh, and it's a nice view. Like this is Aswan. Just Aswan's beautiful. This is an interesting piece that's in here. Uh, it's a repurposed block. And you can tell it's repurposed because the tops, I mean, obviously the, the glyphs have been hand carved, but the top surface, so much smoother than the side surface where it's been narrow, it's been like like hollowed down here. So this was probably a block that went out to here. And now it's been um it's been like shortened and they've they've carved this top surface on it. Uh real cool. But it's it's a nice way to look at like the the differences in finishing uh of different surfaces. You can just touch the side here where it's been it's been like shallowed and then the end of here much much rougher than the the top surface the finishing of the top and the sides and the back unfinished statue you can tell how it was being shaped with chisels this is inside some of the tombs some of them pretty cool still some cool artwork and stuff all rock cut tombs, old kingdom tombs. These aren't these aren't like new kingdom or anything. They're all old kingdom. Yeah, little bits and pieces in this outdoor. So we we're looking for it in here. Like this is where they collect a bunch of this shit and put it out. So supposedly you can look at it. Actual sarcophagi. This is in the museum. Little handmade vases and stuff. This is a big bull nose on a piece. Very similar. You start to see this in a lot of places. Like, hmm, I wonder where they got that idea from. Uh, again, you can see the the reuse of older pieces as foundation layers beneath. Like Elephantine Island's been like built on top of so many times. Um, so yeah. <laughs>
maybe this was part of the mechanism that they would use to get something. They had to put something under here to help get them out, or this is like the the channels for the balls when they like the diorite balls. They would shove them under here and then and then they'd cut it off or something. I don't. I mean, this is all bedrock at one point, so it seems like a lot of a weird shape to be carving beneath the piece and maybe there's some there must be some mechanical reason for doing that and i just don't i don't know what it is though this is my opinion is it the same color of the ostriches yeah, or yeah. one came after or one came before we man this grid work on here is kind of interesting it looks so much alive like the same color almost it's flamingos, yeah, whatever. It, whatever it is, it matches whatever it is. It's either flamingos or ostriches on the pre-dynastic artwork. Same stuff. That's the point. People get all worked up about. You called it ostriches, fling. I don't care. I don't care what it is. I care that it matches pre-dynastic artwork. You know. <laughs> so yeah, here's more of those, like notching things in the ground. It's very strange. This is on the other side where they, you know, they yeeted this block out. Seems like some of those red lines match the scoop marks, like they're hash marks along the way. Yeah, almost, right? It does kind of look like that. Let's have a look. I thought they were just staining from, uh, you know, being exposed, but now that you point out the, the ridges, the grid, you know, it seems like those. To the Great emu wars. Yeah, you'll see. We'll, we'll definitely get better uh, indications of scoop marks. We see these other depictions here. You got the dolphins over there. Yeah, yeah. this is like a fractured part that's come off. But yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There is an obelisk there. Holy shit! Look at that. This is all like they've cleaned this up or something. That is cool. There is an obelisk then. Look at that. It looks like an obelisk. It's telling me my device is too hot. Huh. Another one here. You can see it. That's really interesting. Yeah. Two of them. One, two. Very interesting. Scoopy scoops. Holes in the ground. What else did I take pictures of here? If you look at this one here. Actually, we want to do it here. If you look at this one here, where Bill is standing, imagine yeah. how can you <laughs> down there and with the founder and where is the place that you're going to swing your stone hammer down here? above the unfinished obelisk they still don't let us walk on it man i only got to walk on it once or twice i keep like wanting to i'm gonna have to make a fuss about that the next time i go listen i need to get i need to get on it and walk on it again and we need to let people do that it's not going to hurt anything you used to be able to i just get cranky about it now Just some scoops everywhere, and you can see the uh, unfinished obelisk here. Like it runs down here. You're on the ridge above it, and it just runs all the way up to to there. And you can see the uh, the quarry over here. Like this is the um, down here is the harbour area where where we were earlier. It's like down in here. So here's the unfinished obelisk here, and then this is like a similar block size that came out of here. I'm convinced of it. 
And then there was probably another wall in here. There might have even been a couple of these y y yanked out of here because you've got this all this mountaintop here that was probably, you know, up to where I'm standing was probably all granite, you know. Like this whole area has been removed over time. And this is just where one big piece was pulled out. There might have been other pieces this size actually pulled out of here and here. Like we don't know. Could be just some gigantic pieces yanked out of here because you can see the height of it over here and then this height to the left is also quite high. This whole thing's been dug out. Yeah. And it's all been quarried on top too. All of this stuff's been quarried down from up top. But then this whole big area in the center has been quarried out. And then you've got all this over to here and up to where I am. This whole thing's gone. Some titans under there still, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's... Yeah, I feel like this whole area has been excavated this is looking at the scoop marks in the harbor area all the depounding stones this is at um this is my view from the temple of isis on philae island where i spend my time I pretty much beeline straight for the cafeteria at this place as well. And then what's that? What's that? Oh yeah, we're cruising around in the, the lower lake and you can see there's like a hieroglyphs on some of the... He was probably taking a tour. Yeah. <laughs> on the, uh, the granite around the place. So this, 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 this area was flooded because of the low dam that the British put in in the 1914 thereabouts, I think early 20th century and then they they had to move Philae Island and a few other things but it created like the this whole area flooded this whole area there's a bunch of stuff that went under because of it we went to Memphis did the great Sphinx, went into the great sphinx enclosure again it's very cool and uh, then we did the Great Pyramid. I got some nice shots of the Great Pyramid. I'll show you something that I thought was kind of interesting, though. Inside the Great Pyramid, I thought, I thought that we found some tool marks in there. I thought I might have found some tool marks that I hadn't seen before. So it's in this corner. See, there's like these these lines, the striations in the corner here. So this is in the, like the alcove in between the like the the portcullis area they call it. Here it is, yeah. It's this corner here. It's, it's, all been, it's all been knocked off and knocked down. Yeah. I feel like in this corner there's definitely like saw marks. This is where that big nub is in the... in that portcullis area too. So you think this stone moved? See here, it's like... It's hard to tell. It looks like it, eh? Yeah. That's interesting. I didn't even notice that. That's a good find right there in that corner. Goes around the corner. And yeah, you can also tone in here. Find right there in that corner. <laughs> if you stand here, come here. Huh? Stand up in here for one second to stand in here. Okay. Did he say no, don't do that? No, no. Okay. It's all right. Yeah. It just resonates really loud in here. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I'm only gonna do it for a second though. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Dude, yeah, let's not do that. I'm just looking. It's What's him good? whistling at me. Well, yeah, give it a minute once we get a. They don't like you resonate. It's, we had a guy in there who was like really getting pissy about us doing that in there. I just did it a couple of times. He's like, stop it. Like, why? What's the problem? And tone, like, just like mm, making a noise. So yeah, no, I, I kind of got some alone time in the Grand Gallery, which was really nice. Pretty rare. And then I think I took a little footage from in here. So yeah, that's the that's the entrance to the relieving chambers, so-called relieving chambers. At, right up there, you got to get up there somehow. Let's see. How much?
How much are Logitech G29s these days? 200 bucks. Lowest price in 30 days right now. Where did I get my pyramid light? Uh, I bought it for, it's like a mountain biking um, headlamp. It's a cat eye. It's like a, it's like if you just find any like mountain biking like helmet mounted headlamp it should be super like it's like a car headlight it's perfect i'm sure there's led options now that are just as bright but this thing's pretty bright so down to the bottom of the grand gallery you know i was a bit lazy on this trip i didn't i didn't go down to the subterranean chamber I didn't go to the Queen's Chamber even. I just hung out in the King's Chamber with Yusuf. And we do the little things that we do for people in the King's Chamber that he's got arrangements with dudes to do. Thunderstorm generator. You guess you could always, if you really want to get into it and spend that sort of money, you could always... Um, you could always like sell like a like a, if you bought a G29 you could sell it and upgrade. But if you spent 500 bucks on something you didn't and decided you didn't like racing. Full combo is about 500. The Moza DD5, yeah. So this is going down the ascending passageway. It goes up into the Grand Gallery, and then you can see the it intersects with the descending passageway. With the, the well, there's the three granite plug blocks right at the end. He's staring right at him here, and then this the, this is where the Mamoon's hole connected, right to the the intersection between these, and then they tunneled around him, which is quite a miracle that they found this spot, you know. They're the nine or sixteen. Yeah, so this is a tunnel around to get into the descending passageway that goes down right behind this. Yeah, I know. Are you talking about my talking now or my stomping and breathing while I'm in the pyramid? Yes, stomping feet. That's just part of it. <laughs> oh, come on. This, this is Modir Kabir. Right? Pretty much, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you always want the three pedal set up. Clutch is useful. I mean, I like the clutch just for starts. I use the clutch for starts and for... Um, Recoveries. If I need to spin around real hard, you just if you need to spin the wheels and turn around quickly. I do clutch the starts. Hey boss, who are you? So yeah, we did this from like nine till eleven p.m. So we're up there late. Late. So. Oh, good though. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, chat, we hit two hours. We have. I hope you all enjoyed that video. I'm trying to make these things a bit more of a regular upload to my second channel here, the Uncharted X Live channel. So please do consider subscribing uh, to this channel. That really helps me out. Big thanks to Dub Selector for taking the time to edit these videos. Very much appreciate his help on this. Also, if you want to catch me live over on Twitch, I am streaming two, three times a week. I generally announce when I'm going to stream in my Discord. So if you want to join the Discord, take a look below in the comments. There'll be a link to the Discord. And if you like the work that I'm doing, please do consider supporting the channel through the value for value model. There's lots of ways that you can support the work that I'm doing. It's all outlined on my website. It's unchartedx.com support. We'll catch you in the next one.